So present to you by the CTU Student Resident Office, SRO, and actually all the different uh, hall, and you can see we've got uh, 11 different halls in CTU. So we want to present to you these are several important uh, like uh, aspects, including uh, serve the world, passion, entrepreneurship, coding, innovation, aspiration, and also uh, life and career. And today we are very fortunate to have a Dr. Lawrence Ma. Let me quickly introduce his uh, amazing portfolio. As you can see, he has been working in academia and fintech uh, development and entrepreneurship for over 20 years. And he's the co-founder and CEO of uh, Imali, a uh, Hong Kong based focus on blockchain technology in a uh, fintech, insurtech, uh, legal tech industry. And he is the founder and president of the Hong Kong Blockchain Society, a nonprofit organization educating about blockchain technology uh, to the public. And recently, they've also organized this uh, blockchain Olympic uh, event for university students, even K-12 students. So today we are going to listen to his amazing uh, effort behind with a bunch of uh, important people working behind. And his education uh, with a very shining portfolio uh, in Yale, in Stanford, and in Cornell, in all in mathematics. So we'd like to see how mathematics are connected to uh, blockchain industry, and also what are the opportunity for uh, all of us tonight. Most of us, we are City University student. If you are City uh, residents, please uh, type in your chat room and let us know uh, you are here. Uh, if not, we also welcome you uh, here. Please say something in your chat room, say okay, and we'll let us know. Now, without any further ado, we would like to pass the time to our speaker for tonight. Dr. Ma, please. Okay, okay, thank you, Ray. Okay, thanks for the introduction. Uh, I do have a slide, let me see if I can share right now. Uh, okay, uh, one second. Um, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Ray. I'm the hall master of Hall 2. Yeah. Let's see if Dr. Ma can, uh, can, uh, can start talking. Yes, see. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, don't worry. I, I guess I can uh, kill the time. So I guess uh, the, the microphone is uh, coming up. So I can see many of you are here. Well, well, well welcome. So last year, we've got this uh, online special hall night talk. And we actually see the attendance is actually doubling uh, the previous face-to-face uh, -face, uh, special online talk. So this is going to be our kickoff uh, special online talk event. Dr. Ma, he has just shared the screen. So I would like to pass the time to Dr. Ma. Thank you so much. Okay, thank, thank you, Ray, for the introduction. Um, well, welcome. I mean, actually, uh, I work very closely for City University. So we have been doing this uh, international uh, blockchain Olympia actually together um, or, or co organized with City University. I will talk a little bit more uh, later on on this. So um, so today I want to um, share with you something I've been doing for the past five years, uh, which is blockchain. Um, so I, I start off from very uh, general, um, very like, uh, let's look at what, see blockchain is a technology that's built on the internet. So so let's, let's do some review of what has been happening in the internet. Um, so um, maybe you don't know, actually internet started out in the 80s, okay? Well, I'm sure most of you are not born yet. Uh -huh. But then, uh, it all, of course, it did pick up until probably in 2000, near 2000s, when you, we see the birth of companies like Google, Amazon, Facebook, Tencent, Alibaba. But um, what I want to call that period, I would say before 2010, I would call that the, uh, I would, the internet information. And what do I mean by that? Um, Either information is where I can, let's say I have some information, let's say I have a document or email for that matter. What I want to do is I want to send this information, I want to send an email to my friends, to my colleagues, to my partner, right? As fast as possible, hopefully in real time, no delay. Hopefully as cheap as possible, like hopefully it's zero cost. And also I can send it to many, many people at the same time. Let's say um, I can send to thousands of people, tens of thousands of people. And also, without someone in between, without someone that I need to sort of, uh, I need to go through. So this is, if you, if you think about it, I mean, I can do that basically in email, right? I have an email account, I just send email, I don't need to go through an email organization to do that. I mean, that definitely not, I mean, maybe back in the back, yes, but not definitely not when, you, when you're doing the action, interaction, and it's probably kind of free, okay? Um, now, so, so this is what we, I mean, we can send document, we can send on your video, you can chat, you can do all sorts of fun, wonderful things. Now, but then people start thinking, okay, I can send information, okay? Now, can I send something else, okay? That is something else that people have been actually 
pondering actually for a long time, I actually when the internet began in the 80s, 90s, is to send something of value, okay? So what do, what do I mean by something of value? Well, for example, money, right? Money is something of value. Or can I send money or send, um, I don't know, stock, okay? Uh, stock me, I can trade stocks, okay? I can buy and sell house doing that. If, if, if you think about it, you might say, yeah, of course it can be done. Like we have like online banking. But however, you, 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 there's something different, right? In, in online banking or any you know, of these things, I need a trusted third party in between, right? I need, I need to have a bank account, I need to go through the bank. Or if I do a PayPal, I need to go through PayPal. Or if I do a Alipay, Apple Pay, I need to go through right, Apple or, or I need to go through Alibaba, right? There's someone in between, okay? And also, um, obviously, uh, just take the example, I want to transfer money, okay? It's definitely not real time, right? I, I don't know really, uh, I don't know people experience that like, you want to transfer money to the US. How, how many, you know how many days it takes? to Hong Kong to transfer money to the US? Any idea how many days, let me experience. Um, it takes yeah, three or four days, yeah. I mean, definitely not real time, right? Obviously oh, it's not real time, now, far from real time. And definitely it's not cheap. Uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's definitely not free, right? It costs money to do that. And, 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 more, and most importantly, I have to go through someone I trust. I need to go through the bank. Then, then do you think then how then well, how is it different? Right? So what's so different from, from between transforming information and transferring value? Okay, now if, if you think about it a bit more, right? if I transfer information, let's say a document, right? I transfer, uh, let's say I send out you know, tens of thousands of documents. I still have my document. I just send out copies of that document, right? I still have the original document with me. Now, if let's say if I have a one thousand dollar bill, okay, let let assume that it become digital. If I can do that, I'll be very happy. That means I can send out my one thousand dollar bill, copy many times, send to millions of people, right? I'll be become instantly the, the richest man in the world, right? But that is sort of not allowed, right? Because if, you, if anyone can do that, I mean, the economy I don't know, collapse, right? So, so, so that's something very different. I mean, when you send out information, some information you send out, you can still have a copy. But if you have money, okay, if the thing works, it should be when I send out my copy of of one thousand dollars, I should not have that copy with me again. Now, in in the present world, how how I mean, why why how do I enforce that? Well, because there's a bank, right? So the bank will have my okay, uh, let's say will have the account my account detail, right? So they, if I go to send money, okay, the bank will look at whether I have money to send, and once it's sent, it will be gone. I mean, it will be gone from my account to my whoever I sent to, right? So so. When you have someone in, in uh, a trusted party, and when they are the one that are sort of I know, enforcing this, okay, where then the so so can we, so is it possible then? If we go back to my original. So people were pondering, were pondering, or wondering, is it possible, okay, to get rid of that this third party, trusted third party, so that I can just send money, okay, to my friends, okay, but and in the in the same time, I want to assure something that uh, I cannot send my money over over again. Now, indeed, that was what happened, and this sort of come to this what we, I call the second era of internet. Uh, this is some uh, just to um, image I took from uh, the Economist magazine. Is a um, if I remember, it was a 2015, the October 31st edition. Um, it was a cover story on the, that issue, and it was um, it mentioned something about uh, the promise of blockchain, trust machine, and they say this is a technology behind Bitcoin. Uh, that could transfer how the economy works. And the interesting thing, they say that this, the technology, okay, behind Bitcoin lets people who don't know or trust each other to build a dependent ledger, a ledger is like some kind of database, and has implication far beyond the cryptocurrency. So indeed, the, the blockchain came upon because of the birth of um, blockchain or because of Bitcoin. So so if I look back at this, what, ha what had happened? Okay, so, okay, so I told you that um, um, people, people has been looking at this problem. So this is the problem that um, you want to make sure there's no double spending. Double spending means I have my thousand dollar bill, I copy many, many times. Now, if there's a bank, obviously um, I cannot do that uh, because the bank will know I have sent out the money. But what my question is that what happens if there's no bank? Okay, then um, can I do that? Okay, so that was the question. So indeed this question I was saying that um, has been come, a lot of smart people has been thinking about how to solve this question in the 80s. 
On the left, there is a uh, paper, uh, uh, you know, we can read it by the name of David Chom and uh, three, two other authors. Uh, this David Chom was, was a very famous computer scientist, a cryptographer, and he actually is one of the pioneers uh, in the 80s already uh, been pondering about having this idea of a digital cash, meaning that you can have this I don't know, cash in the digital form on the internet and you can send to people. But then uh, what, what, what happened was that despite all the um, smart people, all the efforts, so they always at some point, okay, to uh, the digital cash, okay, in order to avoid double spending, meaning that you cannot you know, copy your money and send it many, many times. At some point, they need to introduce a trusted third party, okay, in some form or another. They just cannot get rid of this trusted third party. And meaning that um, if there are no trusted third party, then uh, you cannot really prevent people from, you know, from uh, doing bad things or, or from being dishonest, okay? And so this thing, this problem was being around, okay, was probably one of the most outstanding problems in, uh, I would say, on the internet or computer, uh, in computer science. And this problem actually was finally solved in uh, 2008, okay? That was about 12 years ago. And the solution came quite curiously, it was a uh, paper published on the internet, okay? Uh, this is the paper on the right. It's the title of the paper is called Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, electronic cash system. And the author's name is someone named Satoshi Nakamoto, okay? Um, so you might think, is, it, uh, is this a Japanese guy? Or who is this Japanese guy? Okay, Satoshi Nakamoto. Is he a smart computer scientist or whatever? A uh, very in um, interesting story is that uh, as of now, we don't know who Satoshi Nakamoto is. Uh, we don't know he's a Japanese or maybe not Japanese. Maybe it's a pseudonym for a group of cryptographers, computer scientists. Some people think they're C CIA or someone think there's some government. Actually, no one knows. Uh, but what, what we know is that uh, Satoshi Nakamoto, he owns a lot of Bitcoin. And his Bitcoin value, I mean, as of today, is like eight or nine billion US dollars. Okay, it's a lot of money there. Um, so what happened was that this paper uh, was published in 2008. And then one year later, um, Bitcoin was created more or less based on the protocol that was described in this, um, in this um, paper that, was, that wasn't even published. It was just put on the internet. By the way, uh, this, this paper is not that long, over 12 pages. You can download it and take a look at it. It's, it's quite readable. It's very interesting. You can go, go to look at this paper. Now, the, so what, what did Satoshi did? Okay, did he come up with very, a very smart, uh, I don't know, mathemat did he solve a mathematical problem? What did he do? Uh, it, it, interestingly, um, he, this final solution that was uh, put in this paper was not any, was, was not a technical back breakthrough. It's not like he, he, he solved a mathematical problem. It's not like he introduced some new cryptography or, or doing some new computer science. No, no, no. He the whatever the tool he used, everyone saw no, actually, um, it's just some standard tool. But but what 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 he did was something that the all other people before him never have um came to, uh has ever came to their mind is that he the paper introduced game theory, economics, incentive. Uh, but by the way, uh, I, I know if you follow um, today, with the Nobel Prize was uh, awarded in the in the economics, okay, and it was on sort of game theory, on um, auction theory. So uh, actually, so some people are saying that maybe one one day in the future, um, uh, the big the, the blockchain people should be awarded Nobel Prize. But then we don't know who Satoshi Nakamoto is. Maybe by that time he will pay with service, and then we we know who they are, who, who Satoshi is. But 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 anyway, so it's interesting. So the so, uh, so what is this game theory? Okay, he 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 introduced. So, um, if I want to summarize in one sentence, the game theory and incentives is very simple. Basically, he was uh, he was saying that okay, in the block in the Bitcoin system, if you behave honestly. So, what do you mean by behave honestly? You mean that okay, you don't double spend, right? You don't you know keep on I don't know, the same thousand dollar keep on creating many times, okay, and then send to other different people. And also, if, if you don't, um, uh, now imagine, okay, bear in mind that in, in this solution, there are no third party, there are no trusted failure, there are no bank in it, okay? So so if there is a bank, okay, so already it's been solved by other people before. So there's no trusted third party in the Bitcoin system. So we, so he said, if you behave honestly, then you'll be awarded, okay? And the, so what is, the, what is the award? The award is in, uh, in terms of Bitcoin, because Bitcoin is a value, right? On the other hand, if you behave dishonestly, so what do you mean by dishonestly? You mean that you try double spend or you or you try to send Bitcoin 
which you don't have. Okay, you can see I think that there's no no bank to look to, to to overlook this, or you might just you know just just send thing you don't have. Okay, but if you do, you you try to do that. Okay, you'll be punished. And but then you might ask, what is the punishment? Well, the punishment is because uh, if someone might know, I mean, to in order to earn this Bitcoin, you have to do something called mining. And then mining, okay, uh, and nowadays if you really want to do succeed in that, you need to spend money in buying fancy machines and spend, um, pay a lot of electricity. So, so you spend the money and then uh, you, you are found to be dishonest. At some point, then you don't get the reward, okay? And that is sort of the punishment. So, 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 so the, in this paper basically boils down to introduce this, okay, you should behave honestly, then you're okay, then you'll be rewarded. If you try to cheat, then, then you'll be punished. And as I okay, so as I say, uh, one year later after the 2008 paper, uh, Bitcoin was being created. Um, well, uh, one thing I want to say is very important. Um, unfortunately, that a lot of people, especially media, they keep on uh, making this mistake. Uh, when they say um, blockchain, they they all immediately they equate this to Bitcoin. Okay, that is definitely not true. Okay, blockchain is a te technology. Okay, it's a technology that was introduced in this paper. Uh, it's internet technology. Okay. Whereas Bitcoin is a application of that technology, okay? So the Bitcoin is built on using blockchain. So they are, so Bitcoin and blockchain are not, so Apple and Orange. One is an application, one is a te the underlying technology, okay? So unfortunately, in the media, they always make this mistake. So that was how the whole thing began, okay? The, the Bitcoin, which the first blockchain was born in 2009, okay? It's been about 11 years now. So what have been happened for the past 11 years? Well, it turns out there are other blockchain that, 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 uh, that came along. Uh, I want to introduce you a few. I mean, some of you might have heard. Uh, by the way, this gentleman uh, on the right, uh, I don't know if you, anyone know him. He, he used to come to Hong Kong quite often, uh, maybe not re no, recently. Uh, his name is uh, Vitalik Buterin. Okay, he's a uh, Russian born Canadian. Um, he is one of these Mr. His people call him Mr. Blockchain. Okay, he's like a spokesperson for blockchain. Uh, so he he was um, when he was like a teenager, right? He was looking at Bitcoin, very fascinated by Bitcoin. Uh, but then he he was saying that well, it's great. Okay, Bitcoin and uh, the blockchain, you can send Bitcoin. Okay, yeah, you know, without any trusted party, that's good. But can I do something else with this technology? So then he was thinking he's like one of these uh, computer uh, whiz kid, and then he tried to think about things he might want to do, uh, and then he realized that um, if he want, he want, if he wants to do this on the Bitcoin blockchain, it's, it's very cumbersome. Cumbersome. That's because the the Bitcoin, the um, the whole so-called the um, the language is very limited, and then if you want to do something interesting, you have to uh, write very very long program. So he 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 got fed up and tried to. I know, talk to the Bitcoin people and, and trying to introduce um, an idea of how to uh, expand Bitcoin, but then Bitcoin people well, didn't bother. So he strike on his own and then he, I think he was when he was like 20 year old, okay, he left university and sort of uh, was able to raise money and founded this thing called Ethereum. And Ethereum is probably by now, uh, probably the most popular so-called public chain, okay. Uh, so, so what he's trying to create is trying he's trying to create something a, a new blockchain where you can do more than just transferring you know, the cryptocurrencies. I would say more what what is the thing he was thinking about okay, uh, that he think blockchain can can do. So this is um, uh, Ethereum. Uh, there's also one I want to mention um, called Algorin. Uh, this is one of the latest one. Um, they were this 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 is another blockchain uh, what so called public public blockchain. So the one I've been uh, talking about um, so far, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Algram, they're so-called public blockchain. So what, what are public blockchain? So public blockchain means uh, some people you, uh, use the word permissionless. It, it just means that you don't need to permit, you don't need permission to get into the chain, okay? So um, so what, what does that mean? That means if you go to their site and download the software immediately, you'll be part of the network, okay? That's, and then the important thing about public thing is that, so everyone download will have, a, a ledger, right? So ledger will record all the transactions that's happening in the blockchain network. So in the Bitcoin or Ethereum or algorithm, everyone will have this copy of ledger with them, of you, okay, you and me. And then you will you, you see all the um, record of all the possible, all the transactions that has been um, 
done since they um since it was created okay so it's like everyone's sharing everything the idea is that okay now um so uh algorithm was actually founded um quite recently one of the latest ones 2017 uh the reason i specifically uh, mentioned this is because uh so far i think of all the uh blockchain this one is probably the most sophisticated and technologically most sound um for one i mean the founder of this chain is um by this gentleman called Silvio Mikani. he's a very famous uh mit um cryptographer he's a um twin prize award winner like so like nobel prize of computer science uh and the also his team okay behind algorithm is probably one of the all-star team uh, from academics and from industry um so for people who are interested to um, explore blockchain, I think uh, algorithm is probably something to, to, to take note of. Okay. So these are so-called the public chain and, and also something called private chain. Okay. I don't know um, some of my common term, but private chain. Private chain means that you need permission uh, to, to uh, unlike the three chain I mentioned, uh, if there's a private chain means that you need permission to be, to be, to get in. Okay. So you might ask, well, why, why bother? I mean, isn't the, public chain like with Ethereum and algorithm and Bitcoin is it suffice? Um actually uh, unfortunately it's not especially when people and when enterprise say a bank or insurance company or supply chain company wants or healthcare company want to explore this technology. Okay. They they face three problems. Okay. So let me just tell you what the problem is. Okay. And then um for one okay the uh, this is scalability issue mean that um, uh, for Bitcoin and Ethereum, okay, uh, because of the way that the thing is designed, uh, the number of transactions you can process per second is very small. It's here, for example, Bitcoin can only process about seven transactions per second. And definitely that is not enough for most applications. Uh, for example, you want to do like a MasterCard or Visa card network, um, each second you have to process tens of thousands of transactions, okay? And even for something like um, some of e-commerce, you might you have to pause it even more. So the number of transaction is it, just not enough. Uh, it's too small. But although algorithm, uh, which I said is technology, is is much better. I think um, they can push up to the down few thousands. That's okay. So because of limitations, there are a lot of things you cannot really do. Okay, you only do a few transactions per second. And secondly, uh, although um, I personally believe that. Uh, the scalability is not the biggest problem it's because I think as the technology get it developed, I think the eventual they probably will solve this problem. But I think a more serious problem is this privacy issue. Okay, remember I, I was telling you that in a public blockchain, right? So everyone, okay, you join, right? You're, you're become a so-called node. You, you share the whole ledger, right? You, the ledger, okay, that I, is, I see and you're that's the same. Now imagine, so what, what's the problem, okay? Now imagine there's a bunch of bank who wants to use that blockchain technology to do transactions. Let's say, let's say they think, okay, a blockchain will give them uh, a lot of um, good things. Now, um, but then that means, what does that mean? That means, first of all, if it's a public blockchain, that means everyone can go, go, go to the chain and can see all the um, transactions. And now, for a bank, it definitely doesn't make sense, right? If they, if you, let's say HSBC or Citibank or Bank of China wants to do a blockchain application, they definitely don't want other people, right? Like you and me, who have nothing to do with the transaction, able to to see the transactions, to be able to 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 have the same ledger, right? It doesn't make sense, right? Um, so this is privacy, right? Because when you have when you have an enterprise, right? You, you there's privacy of data, the privacy of a customer. So um, so obviously. Uh, something that allow every node to share the same ledger, it just doesn't make sense. Okay, so this is one problem with a public chain. Um, another problem uh, with the public chain uh, is, especially for, um, if you want to apply this to the finance industry, um, the, there are some com compliance issues uh, because uh, you need to know who verify the transaction. Okay, somehow um, the transaction, I said, even though there's no bank, right, that's, they have a way, they still need a way to verify the transaction to make sure people are not double spending, right? But then uh, if you, uh, you know, something like a public chain, it turns out that the, 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 the whoever uh, verifying transaction, we just know them by their, by so-called their, their, their address. We don't know their identity, okay? For example, uh, in Hong but then if you are, say, a, a transaction in Hong Kong for a finance transaction, a bank transaction, 
the Hong Kong Monetary Authority and it's MA, right, the Central Bank of Hong Kong, they, they need to know, for example, they probably want to know that the transaction is verified in Hong Kong and they need to know who verified it because in case there's something will go wrong, right, they, they can um, uh, hold someone for, for, for accountability, right? But then, unfortunately, in the public chain, we, we don't know who they are, we just know by the, 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 the public address, which is some, some string. I mean, they can be anywhere, okay? so that's another issue. Uh, when it comes to, uh, especially for regulated industry. So these three problem um, was something that, um, that when the enterprise tried, tried to adopt this technology, okay, they realized, oh, okay, so I cannot do that, right? Because I, I have to protect my privacy, I need to be compliant. And this lead to um, something called the private uh, blockchain, okay? So um, I've just introduced um, two very popular ones uh, that you might come, come to um, if you study more uh in the block go deeper into the blockchain um uh discipline one is uh, something called the fabric hyperledger fabric it's on the it's belong to the linux foundation uh, backed by ibm okay um there are a lot of projects okay um especially uh with healthcare supply chain uh, people are building applications using this chain uh the other one is um called Corda. okay Corda is um it's built by a company in the US, okay? And Corda is very interesting. They, they were built specifically for the use by the financial institution. Um, as I say, the financial institution is a bit, uh, the financial industry is a bit different from other industry because it's highly, heavily regulated, right? And in particular, um, if you are a uh, bank, right, doing transaction, um, obviously there should be some contract or anything. Uh, bonded by, I mean, people were bound by, by, by contract, okay. Uh, so, so Corda is something that, so how does Corda come about? So, so when the bank was, look, were, uh, in, uh, I think it was back in 2014, the bank were, were looking at this emerging blockchain technology, right? And they were trying to explore whether they can use this. And then they look at Bitcoin, right? They look at Ethereum, they also look at Fabric. And then they realize all these things are sort of not, um, if you want to apply it to the, finance industry context is something lacking. And and then so they decided to, oh, maybe I should build re, build a new blockchain or from, from ground zero. And indeed, this is how Corda came about. So so Corda actually, R3 is own um, the shareholder, include a lot of the biggest bank in the, in, in the world. Um, uh, and then they come together and redesign a, a new blockchain. And the specifically the blockchain is, is built to, um, to deal with financial transaction, okay. So this is very particular. Uh, uh, we call this very so. So you can see that nowadays, um, a lot of the uh, f uh, finance uh, application, um, people use uh, using call that, okay, for, uh, to do, to build the blockchain application. So these are the two um, popular. So so far, I've just been talking about okay that uh, we are trying to solve the double spending problem, right? So, so what is blockchain really? Okay, so so let me let me just in this aside, we'll just say a little bit. I mean, what what is um what is the blockchain? What does it comprise of? Okay, so you realize that in any kind of blockchain, there are always four part to a blockchain. Okay, as an indicator here, um the uh and they in each part they uses a different technology to deal with it. Okay, um. And all blockchain will have this, okay, one way or another. It just depends. Um, so the so some of the difference in is in some of it, in some of the details, okay. Now, for example, each of the, each blockchain we need cryptography, okay, which is to deal with to make sure all the transaction is secure, right? To make sure when you I do transaction, I make sure that um, that um, my account can I mean uh, that will have some kind of password, okay, actually what you call key, okay, in cryptography, that's pro that protect your, your thing so that uh, if someone who, who will, so that everybody send things, okay, when you send money, then people know, are sure that you, you are the one that actually holding the account, okay. So this is the, um, of course, cryptography is a very, very well-developed uh, branch of uh, technology, okay, been around for a long time, and been used in many other things, okay. So this is the, the one that, that ensure the transaction is secure, authenticate, and you can verify. For example, if I send, I, I then they need to verify. Indeed, I'm the one who is who has holding the account, is sending the the transferring the uh, making the transaction. And there is also another part. Okay, as I say, uh, since um, blockchain is dealing with transaction, so 
um, there, will, there will be a ledger. So a ledger, you should think of a ledger as just a, a, a more sophisticated term for a database. But ledger, I mean, in particular, I mean a database of transactions. So the memory blockchain, I mean, fundamentally, is dealing with transactions, okay? Um, it, a simple transaction will be transferring money. A more complicated transaction could be a uh, transaction in trade finance or, or, or other discipline, okay? But just transaction, in, in, I mean, in general. So, so there's a database that collect or uh, record all the transaction. And one part of the uh, blockchain will have a shared ledger, right? A shared database so people can share this transaction. As I say, as I said, in the public blockchain, then everyone will share the same ledger, okay? But in a private blockchain, okay, a private chain, and that's not true. You, um, so your ledger only contain the transaction that you actually do offer, okay? But, but there's always this um, shared ledger, okay? That is inside the blockchain. And also there will be something called um, shared contract or some people, some, you might have heard of the term smart contract. Uh, smart contract is quite a bad term because it's not smart, right? This is just a computer code that, uh, so smart contract is basically a piece of computer code that embed the business term, uh, this, um, saying that, okay, if this happened, then you transfer this. Okay, it's just a, uh, a piece of code, so it's not smart, so no AI in it. And it's not a contract in the sense that it's not legally binding. Okay, so so this is a smart contract. Unfortunately, we're stuck with that name, but smart contract, I mean, the, the joke is that it's not smart and it's not a contract. Okay, just a piece of co code, okay, just um, encode the, uh, the business transaction, uh, the, the, the business term. And finally, there's something called um, consensus, as I say, trust, right? And as I was, uh, in my title, we talk about uh, blockchain is a trust technology. So, so this trust is probably the, one of the most crucial part of blockchain. And people use the term called cons consensus. So what, the, what does that mean? Consensus, so trust is, is, to, is the part of the, uh, in the blockchain to tell you how are the transaction being verified. Okay, so who verified the transaction? So how is it verified? Now in, now in the more the traditional world, in a very centralized world, like, like a bank, so the bank is just one party, right? The bank is verifying the transaction. If I want to transfer money from, from my account to my friend's account, the bank verify whether this transaction is valid. But as I said, in, in a blockchain, you, you, you try to get rid of a, this, um, this trusted uh, a party of the bank. So, so then, but then, but then you get rid of it. So that still there must be a way um, to uh, verify the transaction. And it turns out that the different blockchain has a different way to verify a transaction. So for example, Bitcoin, so Bitcoin, how do, how do you verify transaction? So without going into detail, the idea is that uh, instead of everyone, it's not one party sort of uh, very centralized. It, Bitcoin idea is that like, they, like, they have everyone to sort of participate to verify the transaction in, certain, uh, in a certain way. Okay, so, and this is uh, what we call the, they have something called proof of work. Okay, so I won't go into detail, but, but it's a way that everyone sort of work together to ensure the transaction is correct, meaning that you don't double spend. And then different blockchain, the main difference in, in the sum of the chain I described before, um, the cryptography part, the shared ledger and shared contract are almost more or less very similar. And the main difference is in their consensus. Bitcoin has a consensus called proof of work. Um, Ethereum has its own, own version of transaction, or oh, sorry, own version of consensus. Uh, in Fabric and um, uh, Corda had their own version. Basically, in a private chain, the way they do co uh, consensus is, it's not one, one party doing it, like uh, you just trust one party. They have a group of people Okay, trying to verify the transaction together. And essentially it boils down to, 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 to take a vote, okay? People to take a vote and say whether this transaction is valid, uh, more or less, in the private chain, okay? Now, um, if, if you are actually doing a, a blockchain application, the part you will actually involve is in the shared contract part. You probably you will not going to, to uh, tackle the consensus because it's, this is very technical. And this is where the blockchain people come in, right? like like R three or IBM, uh, cryptography, and things. So the one that you will actually learn, like right, actually when you um, go into blockchain, will be to develop the so called smart contract and to build your application. And usually, where where you come in, okay, if you want to build, uh, in, um, you want to um, participate in the, in the blockchain uh, ecosystem. So um, now, so. I haven't really given a say, but 
but one thing I, I want to um, point to this slide, I think this is one of the things, um, hopefully um, one of the take away from today is the following. It's what um, I want to explain why, why is the blockchain there's so much um, uh, interest in it, okay? And why people think that this potentially this is one of the um, very disruptive technology and it's going to change the world. Um, if, you have, if you want me to say um, in, in one sentence why, I would say the following, okay? Blockchain is trying to do one thing. I think this is, um, I think, a very important thing. Blockchain is trying, to, it's a technology that try to um, give you the single truth, okay, for all the participants in the transaction. So what I mean by that, let me just uh, explain that a little bit. So when you have a transaction, I mean, any kind of transaction, any kind of business process, there's always okay, more than one party, right? There are many parties, like if you transfer money, I mean, you might be trying Poly A transfer to Poly B, but you think about it for more complicated uh, uh, business process. Okay, um, there are many, 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 there could be many, many parties in it, right? Um, uh, example I, I, I like to give is like in trade finance, right? You have a buyer, right? Uh, who want to buy, let's say, say the US want to buy goods from China, or China, you have the exporter, right? Then you have the logistic company, you have the shipping company, uh, you have the custom office. Okay, you have the bank, right? Because they might need finance. So then, so in that particular trade finance transaction, there are many, many uh, participants or uh, stakeholder in that transaction. And what blockchain, um, the ultimate goal is to give a single truth to that transaction to all the uh, to all the stakeholder participant. Now, what my what my bear single truth means that everyone in see the same thing, trust the same thing, and works on the same thing. That is what I mean by single truth all the time. Okay. Now, um, if you think about that, um, I would say, okay, at the, at the present moment, this is not true. Okay, this is not being, this is not achievable in the moment. Um, it's true that, okay, um, at the end, okay, when you try uh, of a transaction, when actually part of part, the part, party has to settle the thing, it's true that they need a single truth. They have to agree on all the terms, make sure all the terms, everyone is uh, uh, working on the same term, everything sort of match up. But that is at the end, okay? From the start of the transaction to the um, end, in the, mid, in, the, in the intermediate step, that is not true. Why is it not true? Why it's not being, uh, we cannot achieve that? That's because right now, all the different party, right? They don't, sh they don't really share all that information, right? They don't share the database. And each of them do about, go about doing their own thing, right? Some of them might do the thing digitally. Some people might do this thing manually. So at all the at the immediate stage, it's true. Um, it's not true that everyone shall sort of see the same thing, trust the same thing, and works on the same thing. Okay, it's not true. And yeah, at the final stage, yes. Now, what does that mean? Okay, that uh, there are two con um uh, implication. The first implication is that at the last moment, okay, you you have to spend a lot of effort, okay, to reconcile things, okay, and that is very ineffective, okay, um, not very effective, and uh, very costly. And that is the reason why, for example, when you do a bank transaction, it is not instantaneous, it takes a few days. Okay, they have all the party, they need to reconcile things, including they have to make sure the KYC and AMA, all these things, okay? Another thing um, that, another thing that will happen if we don't have single truth is fraud, okay? Why would people, why, why, why fraud happen? Well, fraud happens because, okay, you don't have single truth all the time because, um, as if there are a mo if there are some moments some people sort of have more information than the other, then if it, I mean, if that some party turns out to be a bad party, it's then there's a possibility that this per, uh, this party have more information might fraud the others. Okay, and if you think about it, what reason why they are fraud is because we don't have single truth. If all the party really see everything and know everything, it's very difficult to fraud the other party, right? It's, it's because if everyone has the same information, so this is one takeaway on it. Just, Blockchain try, is trying to, it's the technology trying to try to achieve single proof. And, and, now, and I, now if I say this way, then you can imagine that if that is, if that is possible, you, you can imagine how powerful the blockchain is, okay? It's, um, that, doing the single proof. Now, okay, so next I want to um, give you uh, 13 problems, a challenge, I, I, I used to call them. Um, this is a problem that are facing our world. And all of them are, are very serious problem, big problem. And I believe that blockchain will have um, 
either solve this problem or partially solve this problem. Uh, and and if, for all of, all of you, okay, uh, young, okay, entrepreneur or, or young mind, um, if you can, okay, use the technology, okay, and able to, you know, get a solve this, you, you, then you become, you know, you can build a you know, successful company, you become a unicorn, okay. So, so what are the 13 challenges I, I want to talk about? Okay, the first challenge I want to talk about is fake food scandal, okay. Um, Fake food, um, unfortunately, happened all over the place. I mean, um, in the US, uh, in this is what Bill Powell in China was also in, in the US. The fake food problem. Okay, so I want um, you when I go through this, I know, keep in mind. Uh, I want you to think about if I can achieve single truth. Okay, can I? Were I able to um, solve this problem? Were I able to? Um, I don't know. Have a solution. Okay. okay. This is the first problem. The second problem I want to talk about is, again, this is a fake, but it's a fake drug scandal. Um, it turns out that uh, in Asia, especially, uh, fake drugs are a key reason why some of these um, diseases, which are supposedly can be cured, still kill so many people. There's a lot of fake drugs, um, in, in, especially in this part of the world. Um, fake drugs, um, it's very unfortunate. In, not only um, their money loss, I mean, lives are being you know, um, taken away because of fake drugs. Okay, and this is um, the second challenge I want to give you. Okay, the third challenge I want to give you is fake goods, okay? So um, uh, all these uh, luxury goods, right? all this, uh, your Rolex watch, your, your, uh, your, your luxury bag, uh, it's a big market, right? The, well, I think this is, um, I think this number must, must be much bigger now. This is probably a couple of years ago. It's a half a trillion dollar my, um, market, the fake industry, okay? Um, uh, the global brand kind of thing. Okay, okay, it's a big market. Um, so can we can we deal with this? Okay, can I use blockchain to deal with this fake food scandal? Uh, uh, by the way, I mean, um, that that definitely, I mean, people like LV have been exploring blockchain solutions, but but um, unfortunately, they, they there's still some crucial thing. Uh, I think they haven't been able to solve. Okay, maybe I will come back to that. I mean, why 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 this problem is not so easy? Okay. People thought they have solved the problem, but it's not really solved yet. Okay, the fake good scandal. The fourth uh, problem may, may be a little bit closer to to, to home. Uh, click fake credentials. Okay, uh, this is very unfortunate. Um, I have this uh, headline from you know, Hong Kong. The people do uh, fake their credentials, whether this is academic credential or whether um, it is their um, job experience. Um, it happened all over the. I mean, every, I mean, anywhere. I mean. I uh, remember last year there was a big scandal in the U.S. in some of the prestigious university. Their mission, I think, there was a, uh, there was a um, people creating fake uh, athletic credential. Okay, um, I mean this is very unfair because uh, because you might be competing position and then and then someone may take away your position not because they're better than you, just because they're faking their credential. Okay. Um, by the way, I think the fake credential. I think. It's one problem I think the blockchain can really solve. And I think um, people are, uh, it's, it's something that I think it can be, it, I encourage you to look at this, I mean, to this part. I think this problem can be solved now, actually, effectively, actually. Um, the fifth challenge I want to talk about is so-called data leak scandal. Uh, so this is a little bit different, I'm not talking about fake things now. Uh, so you probably, uh, if you follow the news, I mean, it doesn't come to surprise. I mean, every week, every other week you will hear, okay, Certain big side being there been hacked, um, millions of data have been stolen. Remember, if you recall last year, Cafe Pacific, there were um, you know close to ten million <coughs> okay um, persons their their person their their customer um their, their data been stolen okay um, um and uh, I I think one one reason for why this problem is that uh it, it's a it's more a reflection of of their just uh, the fact that all these people are using a very centralized architecture, meaning that they put all the data in one place. Um, so they all, their defense is really the firewall. So once you were able to break into the firewall, and I, I think a lot of times it's because they, um, they work with someone insider. Um, once you go in, I mean, they, you can do whatever you want. They're, they're no, they're no defense. Uh, and this problem is getting serious, okay, the, the data leak. Um, the sixth problem is what happened in Hong Kong, I call it the construction scandal. 
Uh, we recall, I think uh, last year there were um, this, uh, in the MTR, uh, this the Shakti Central Link. There are um, you know, there are some scandal, and then um, while as the event uh, unfold, we were told that forty percent of the crucial construction record, which are known, uh, were missing. Okay, they were supposed to be there, they're missing, and then apparently worker changed construction method without approval. So this is an example where you have a lot of party in it, right? No single truth, obviously. The government, MTR, construction company, right? They should be, they are all whole part of it. And obviously someone know more than the other. Some people know more things than the other. Um, so block, so I would um, challenge you, can blockchain help to address this problem? Okay, this is the sixth scandal. Okay, the seventh scandal uh, is what I call inefficiency. Uh, this is, um, for example, inefficiency in the insurance com uh, insurance and banking. Um, I, I don't know if you if you ever do a medical claim. Okay, if you haven't done, sometimes why does it take a month or two? Okay, or a few months to 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 get my uh, claim process. Or if you um, go through the banking, why does it take a few days to transfer my money or to or, to, or, feel, uh, or it takes time to clear my check? Or, or if you're in trade finance, then you realize that uh, it's very inefficient. Okay, can can we do better? Can we solve the inefficiency? Okay, the efficiency will bring a lot of cost to it. Okay. Um, the egg is a, and I'll, back to fraud, but it's a fraud in the finance sector uh, context. Uh, let me explain a little bit. Um, uh, let me explain the multi-claim fraud. Okay, this is in the insurance sector. Um, this is one of the ha biggest headache for insurance company. Uh, give an example. Um, you, you know, there's something called travel insurance, right? It's the insurance you buy, like, like say, you go, you, you go on the trip, like you buy the insurance, right? In case your your the luggage or um, no, no, lost luggage, then you get you can, um, if you have bought this policy, right? You you you, you can you you can, you can get um, get the uh, get the insurance claim, okay? So what happened is that um, there are some people. Okay, who will buy thirty or forty such policy? Okay, from different insurance company. Okay, um, so called multi policy. Now, one thing I let, let me just explain about this multi policy. Okay, it's allowed to buy more than one policy to cover. Okay, whatever your liability, that's okay. Now, what is not okay is that let let's say a, a particular um loss. Okay, let's say it's like auto um um. Insurance, right? Let let's say um there's some accident and you you need you need to fix the car. Let's say it costs like twenty thousand dollars. Okay, uh, you, you can I don't know put I don't know bring together I don't know um one or two policies, two or three policy to that. But what what is not allowed is that you cannot I don't know put together all the policy and claim more than twenty thousand dollars. Okay, you cannot claim more than than than, than the loss. Okay, then that will be a fraud. Okay, and that's illegal. So this is what happened is in the uh, travel industry, like people buy twenty or thirty different policy okay to cover their the their trip okay all this is to try to fraud the uh the insurance company uh, that's because all this um is traveling uh travel insurance is the claim is quite small okay and what happened is that if for the insurance company a lot of time right because of competition right they rather than i don't know have people investigate okay they would just pay it off okay because um sometimes to investigate might cost more than another uh, just pay off the thing. So because of, uh, of that, then um, this problem can never be solved for this kind of very, uh, when you, when, when each time you pay very small claim. Um, I'll give you an exam, another example, in the medical insurance claim, okay, you have the inpatient and outpatient, right? Inpatient is the one when you go to hospital, uh, outpatient when you go to the clinic. Now in the inpatient where the claim amount could be quite substantial, right? Uh, that is usually not a problem because the insurance company would definitely find we will we'll have the people to go and investigate, okay, whether, okay, uh, there's no double claim or multi-claim. But for, as I said, again, for um, those uh, clinic, okay, like a two or $300 for another, again, they would not bother, right, because it probably it costs more um, to, to investigate. Um, so um, one of the uh, our partner, which is one of the uh, biggest insurance companies in this part of the world, okay, they operate in uh, like 18 country. Um, they told us that um, a couple of years ago, um this outpatient claim okay because of um they use quite still use a very manual way to process the claim uh the 
because of error or because maybe could, that some some of them could be fraud, like overclaim, they lost over one billion US, US dollar per year. Okay, because of that, it's a huge amount of money. Okay, um, the next challenge is is what I call a uh, uh, unbanked. Okay, um, maybe you're not aware there are in 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 the world there's a lot of people do not have a bank account. <laughs> And these people, um, so people talk about financial inclusion. So people who bank out are really shut off from, from, uh, from a lot of services, right? Um, and the one, the biggest, okay, uh, for example, the World Development Bank or a Asian Development Bank, this is one thing they have been trying very hard to, to resolve, I mean, to, to solve this problem. And actually, if, if we look in, into the, the reason uh, why there are so many unbanked people is because, um, in Hong Kong, in order to open a bank account, what do you need, right? You need your Hong Kong ID, right? You need a proof of address. And it turns out in the world that a lot of people do not have any kind of ID. Okay, that is really the, 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 the main reason for so many unbanked people. And this is something that the, uh, the UN uh, are working very hard to, um, to, to, re to try to address. Um, challenge number 10, I call it the remitt remittance rip off. So what do we mean by that? Um, so you probably know that um, in in Hong Kong, um, each month, right, a lot of the domestic helper will, will um, try to um, remit money back 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 home. Okay. Um, same in, in in for example in the US, right? A lot of the, a lot of domestic helper come from um, say the uh, South America, Central America. They they also each when they will and 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 and, and, it, and it turns out that. The amount they remit is not that much, right? Uh, and but the cost you know, as a percentage is very high; it can go up to five percent, even higher, um, sometimes. Okay, so it's it's very costly. Okay, number eleven, um, charge. I would call it data integrity. So um, now, I mean, people talk about um, in the what the. Uh, IoT, like the fourth industrial revolution, you have all this self-driving car, all these smart appliances, right? So internet, everything. So every, so every gadget, okay, it, it, it is on the internet. Now, um, I, I, I what, 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 one problem actually, I put on people. Um, I hope more people are aware of this. Is that, um, in, in the past, people are worried that be the data needs to be secure, right? Uh, so that people, um, but now I think I'm more serious um, issues that you want data, okay, the integrity of the data. So what do we mean that? Like, it, it, see, a lot of these sensors or, or devices, okay, they they are quite uh, they are quite um, um, the resource is quite low, right? They cannot have a lot of very um, sophisticated protection, right? So it's very easy for people to hack on it, okay. So, so imagine, right? You, 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 you are using a self-driving car. Imagine you, you, are, you have all your data sensor, right? Uh, imagine one of these days that it might sound like a science fiction, but the, imagine a scenario like one day you're doing a self-driving car in the future, and suddenly you get a message saying that, okay, I just hacked into your self-driving car. Okay, um, now, okay, I know that you're coming to the wrong corner, but but I will change the data so that I will just tell the car that it will go on a straight line. And unless you pay me uh, X and on a Bitcoin, then you will crash. I mean, I mean, this kind of scenario, it, it might sound like, okay, sci-fi, but then it's possible. And that's because of the um, the data integrity, especially when you have so many things connected. Uh, I remember there was uh, uh, Jamie Diamond, I don't know, he's the CEO of the, um, Jim, Jim Beacon Walk and Chase, okay, one of the biggest banks in the world. Um, he was just saying that uh, when, um, because of these uh, all these internal things, so he was joking that so he he would be very embarrassed if the next next day he woke up and it's and then he saw the headline saying that JP Morgan is being hacked by by some refrigerator. Okay, so um, so this is a serious issue. Okay, especially with things that are getting more and more connected. The data integrity is a big issue. Okay, uh, number twelve, I would call it a middleman or media media middleman. Uh, I don't know whether you still buy anyone, but still pay for their music, okay? But if you do, um, it turns out that um, a, a dollar you pay, okay, uh, the artists, right, that who actually create the, um, the piece of um, music only get uh, 15 cents if you're famous, or if you are just a young artist, you only get uh, 0 0.001 cent. Uh, not only get very little, uh, you get it, um, I don't know, a few months or half a year, okay, um, from, from when you create, okay. 
we have to wait a long time. And the reason is because there are so many, you can see all the people in between, you have all these uh, record label, performance rights, streaming association, blah, 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 all these things. So similar with uh, advertising. Uh, so um, with the new technology, maybe if some of these intermediate, if they are not bringing value, they, maybe they, should, they should be eliminated, right? I'm not saying you're trying to eliminate everyone. I mean, but then if you're not bringing value, why, why, should, why should I pay you, right? Okay, the last uh, blood, uh, challenge one, to call, I call it, is it safe? Um, so what do I mean by that? Um, this is a, quite interesting. This is something with, uh, sort of uh, more a uh, doing with actually a um, your your uh, workspace or let's say hospital. So so for example, Airbnb. Okay, uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe um, I don't even know that Airbnb actually um, say in the US they hire a lot of lawyers. Okay, thousands of them. Um, why? Why do they hire a lot of lawyer? Uh, that's because they got a lot of lawsuit. Um, they got lawsuits because um, some of these people who are let out their apartment right, for Airbnb uh, their, to, um, their customer. Uh, Sometimes I don't know because they didn't change a lot. Whatever they, they these people go back okay and ransack their house, their apartment. Okay, so that's why they get a lot of lawsuits. Okay, another place. I mean, uh, uh, instant, imagine a, a co-working space, right? Um, uh, usually, uh, you are a, a occupant of property, you give a, I don't know, a card to, to assess, right? Um, pretty, and then you find a pretty soon you, you give a card to your friend and your friend gives it, and pretty soon, I mean, people who are there, you don't know whether they should be there or not. So there's a lot of security issue. Um, similar for the hospital, right? A uh, hospital, right, supposedly should have security. I mean, you should be, people should check who you are before you can go to the, um, the hospital bed or someone, right? But I, my, my recent experience is that um, I visit someone and for some reason I can just go straight to the bed without anyone checking me. So that's just control, it's, it's, not, it's not there. Um, so it's a safe, okay? Okay, so these are 13 challenge I have given. Uh, so so I, um, uh, I don't know uh, whether you have chance to think about uh, whether blockchain can can uh, can dress or solve any of these things, but to do that maybe um, I you might need more tools. So here I just want to say um, uh, one thing. Okay, for you want to get a more a, a better understanding, uh, I strongly recommend this particular book that was published um, last year uh, by some by the IBM uh, blockchain people. It's called Blockchain for Business. Um, there, uh, the, the now, okay. One thing I, I did not stress is that I, I, it, it, in the blockchain world, they actually, um, right now you can see there are two worlds actually. There's a world where people, um, uh, people trying to apply blockchain for the enterprise application, right? Trying to, uh, for example, the, the challenge I gave there, those are enterprise kind of application, right? You want to solve some of the fake, um, goods or fake drugs, or you want to solve for, Solve the fake financial problem. This is our enterprise problem. Of course, this is the enterprise world. But so this this particular book is really meant for people who want to solve enterprise. Whereas the other world called the crypto world is people who try and create cryptocurrency and try to trade. So so that's a little bit that world is a little bit different. So I I want to stick to the enterprise world where you're trying to build application for enterprise use. Okay, uh, as I indicated in, in my challenge. So it turns out that uh the, the books of point out this. This is the sixth thing that um, that you should really address: identity, uh, digital fear. Digital fear is something of uh, a lot of interest lately because uh, people are talking about the central bank uh, digital currency. I mean, the uh, instead of Bitcoin, the central bank, right, like uh, MA or a bank, actually issued its digital money. It's a big topic right now, uh, especially when China recently have said that they are going to launch their uh, digital RMB very soon. When I say so, these are some of the things that that the book. So say that you, you need to have these okay to, to build your blockchain applications. So um so here uh, I sort of this is what I want to share today. But if people you want to really um learn more, I really encourage you to come to our so I'm just doing some advertisement here. Um for uh this is actually to organize with Blockchain University. So we have this uh, so-called blockchain Olympia. We're going this is our fourth year. Um so um so this was uh last the the most previous, the there was a final right, in Hong Kong um, 
So we're not in Hong Kong, the international. The Hong Kong final was in June um, this year. So we should start our, our 2020 to 2021. Um, so in, in our, uh, oh, maybe I, I'll ask, uh, is Gabriel here? Maybe he can say something. You want to say something, Gabriel? Can you hear? Are you here? Oh, no, or maybe not. Um, so I, I really encourage you to, um, uh, because um, in in our uh, in this uh, Olympiad, we actually uh, provide a lot a lot of uh, training and workshops, uh, including the topic I just um, uh, I I just was just saying okay so we have like a um, tens of hours of of workshop that has been which started um, uh, the last two weeks so uh, please. I don't know, visit this website and find more. I think um, for you, uh, right, right now, so blockchain is a very, very new uh, discipline. Uh, so it's, there are not too many courses, I realize, that you can find in the university. So what we have been doing is, this is our fourth year, so we will be working um, with our industry partner and working with the university and have, been, and have prepared, our, I don't know, I don't know uh, at least like eight or nine courses that total to probably over 20, to 30 hours. Uh, we go for all this topic in detail. Um, I really encourage you, uh, you know, to come. And also, if you, are each, uh, if you really are interested, um, you should participate in our competition. Uh, um, that will be, um, for the Hong Kong, will be uh, June next year. Um, to participate, basically, you have to try and pick a problem, say one of the challenge I should show you, and try to um, come up with some kind of solution by writing a white paper. and, and, and Tell me, I mean, what are your ideas to, to solve that, that problem? It's a very good experience. Uh, I, I really encourage you, and I think this is a very good way to learn. Okay, so um, maybe I, I will, this is all I want to say today. So anyone have a question, please, please, um, please feel free to ask me. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Yeah. Ma. Uh, yeah. We really appreciate your time. Uh, allow, um, allow me to keep you a little bit longer. We yeah, actually no have a student. Um, yeah. So I think the question is, uh, I would like to ask about the blockchain, how to make the project with a blockchain. I think the question is how to get started. I think this is a good question. Yeah, yeah it's a good question. Come to our training course. Okay, training <laughs> course. That we definitely. Um, also, um, um, the book I just uh, sort of show, um, I mean, if we can get hold of, I think you can get a free copy too on the internet. Uh, look at this book, but, but definitely come to our, come to our session, I think. Um, we have been doing that for the past few years, so we can share with you what, what, what I mean. In particular, uh, in particular, let me just say this: uh, since last year, uh, our this uh, event is sponsored by uh, Hong Kong Bank HSBC. Um, so um, they have, um, one, I think, one they actually they are very generous. They uh, they sponsor us and um, ask us to give these hours of training to all the students. Uh, one reason is um, HSBC is, is a big blockchain player. Um, they are definitely looking for for for, for people, uh, interns or, or employ, employee. I mean, so if you're thinking of working in the finance sector, I mean, the, yeah, I think this is a good way. I mean, to to learn uh, and also um, we, this year in particular, we will um, put a little bit more emphasis on the um, blockchain application of fintech. So we will actually um, decide to offer some new courses that um, not just on the technology blockchain side, but more on, on the, um, the finance side. I mean, how, and I would also, we would probably invite you know, like HSBC or other industry player, player to say more about for their um, company, what are they looking for? What kind of blockchain projects are they working on? I think it should be interesting. Right. Thanks a lot, Dr. Ma. Uh, seems that we have a, a bit more questions, but due to yeah, the okay. time, we may need to stop here. But before okay. we, uh, we take the group photo together, I would like to highlight this uh, okay. launching event. Uh, actually, one of our whole uh, our team, KB, uh, he formed uh, a, a team with other team members from City University. So they got this uh, best FinTech award from this uh, event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they did very well. Last, yeah, this was the past year. Yeah, That's yeah. right. And the yeah. team is called MicroSense. I yeah. think, uh, if they also know, did well, yeah, they, yeah both, both in Hong Kong and also in the international audience. Of course. And now we would like to take a group photo together. If yeah. actually you could turn on your camera and then we're going to take a group photo together, that'd be great. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you, Ray. Thank you. Yeah. Cannot we open the camera because the host has disabled it.
Oh, really? You cannot uh, stop uh, your video because the host has disabled it. <laughs> I think you can turn on your camera, please. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Let's take a photo together. Yeah. And we are going to take four photos together. And I think Patrick and also uh, the team, the Special Holiday Talk team will uh, take care of it. If you want to join this uh, Special Holiday Talk team, please approach our RT, your four representative, and also the RA member. Okay. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Okay, thank, thank you, thank Don't you. Worry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I one, hope to two, see you in the uh, in our event in the future. Please come. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, Doctor Ma, I think you know, you you didn't turn on your camera. But, uh, oh, I didn't turn on camera. Uh, yeah, we we only see how, this uh thing. Yeah, how, but how I guess uh, people could see your face poster. Yeah, <laughs> but if you can turn on camera, it'd be great. So now we take a photo. Let's say cheers. One, two, three, cheers. Okay. Cool. And okay. then uh, Patrick is going to take a uh, few more because we have uh, quite a number of people. Um, so also, I guys at the we'll... back. Um, yeah, guys at the back. Also, please turn on your camera. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is amazing event. Okay, now uh, I, so I, I have to turn on my camera. Okay. Cool. Turn yeah, on. now everybody can see Dr. Ma. So yeah. this is a uh, amazing. Sorry, sorry, talk. I forgot to turn on. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, I guess we are going to uh, uh, remember uh, your sharing tonight. Um, okay. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Patrick, if you're done, let us know. Sure. So because he's going to take a couple of photos together, yes. Because there are many, many uh, people. <laughs> it <takes> some time. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so we will also take uh, the record uh, of your attendance and uh, it will contribute to the whole return point as well. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you for your attention. Okay. We're for, for all right. Nice thank you, guys. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Yeah. We hope to see you again uh, in the upcoming special online talk event. Thank you all. Goodbye. Good job. Uh, we have bye to bye. say thank you, to the special online talk team. Yes. Patrick, you did a good job to lead the team. Thank you. And, and Ivan and Nita, shout out. <laughs> cool, yeah. I think it's a good time to recruit more members to join this uh, special online talk team. And also, Su uh, Sujin, you can recruit people to join the IT team. Yeah, thank you, Jimmy, for joining us. I think uh, Michelle is also here tonight. Yes. May I leave this Zoom, Zoom room? Of course. Yeah, you can leave anytime. Goodbye. Bye-bye.